So the first thread that we followed was Yagyu Jubei. The second is going to be Futaro Yamada. He's a prolific author of historical fantasies and ninja epics. We could do an entire episode on the guy's body of work, but we've really got to try and stay on target. We're going to focus on two main books of his. This chapter focuses on the first, The Koga Ninja Scrolls, published in 1959. The novel follows two ninja clans, the Iga and the Koga. They're named for the regions they inhabit in this valley surrounded by mountains and the Iga are usually led by none other than Hattori Hanzo himself. Very good! They're ordered into a battle royale style conflict where they have to pit their 10 best fighters against each other until one side or the other is eliminated as a way to tell which heir is going to become the Shogun. Two men enter, one man leaves. The lead characters are Genosuke and Obero. They're star-crossed lovers like akin to a Romeo and Juliet uh, headed for tragedy. The ninjas themselves all have unique fantastic superpowers due to generations of inbreeding. So in the novel there's all this talk about how maybe crossing their bloodlines or merging their bloodlines would be a way to counteract the generations of inbreeding, but in the adaptations there's not a lot of mention of that. I guess it's cooler to have superpowers than it is to talk about how maybe your mom and dad were brother and sister. And there's also a character named Kagero that has poisoning powers. You want to back up and try that again? Yeah, I know. That's some real Tarantino style lifting going on there. You could have spit my socks. I mean, I couldn't believe it. I mean, that's it's 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 crazy. But you know, in a way, there's there's a certain symmetry that I guess. I mean, in a little way. Uh, yeah, because she was also raped and tortured in this series, and because it's a TV series, it goes on for like an entire episode. I wanted to keep our analysis of Futaro Yamada's novels at two, but Kagero is one of our three main Ninja Scroll leads. Do you think maybe it's worth taking a moment to shed a little bit of light on the legacy of her character by looking at a third novel? Yeah. Well, it's worth mentioning that ninja girls aren't really the historical reality that you might think that they are. Well, that's really not fair. There were certainly ninja-trained females that were in brothels and treated as spies and good for passing along information, but there's not a lot of real, like, records of women fighting on the battlefield alongside the men. Oh, oh. Despite a very progressive attitude towards homosexuality, it was still a pretty misogynistic world, and you didn't see women out fighting with the men. Nobody's perfect. Well, it's still a wicked idea, and the term kunoichi is actually cemented into our lexicon and become part of pop culture as well. <sighs> so who do you think gets credit for it? Yeah, Futaro Yamada created it. I believe the term kunoichi, which means ninja girl, was basically created by him. The Japanese kanji is made up of three lines. Each one means woman. Uh, ku, no, and ichi specifically. Kunoichi was actually developed long after the Edo period had ended. I believe, unless I'm mistaken, that the first reference to it was in 1964 in Futaro Yamada's novel uh, Ninpo Hakenden. And since then, there have been many, many Ninja Girl movies, so many that we could probably do an entire episode just on analyzing all of them. Let's get on with it. Right. Back to Koga Ninja Scrolls. It's pretty easy to see, aside from the name, a bunch of the influences that it had on Ninja Scroll. Obviously, Kagero is a huge part of that. Uh, Superpowered ninja characters, feuding and whatnot, uh, some similar power sets. But for Ninja Scroll Completists, you might know that the Koga Ninja Scroll novel was actually adapted into a best-selling manga called Basilisk, which itself has been adapted into an anime of 24 episodes, largely received well by fans. Let's take a look at that. I'm going to allow it. We already know about Kagero, but if you remember back to the introduction, you remember Yurimaru, Toothfloss Boogaloo? Well, check it out. In Basilisk, there's a character with a similar power set, a similar demeanor, and a similar name, Yashimaru. We also get an explanation of what exactly is going on with these weird hairs or threads or cords or whatever it is that he's using. 
Caught it in animal oil to shiny black strands from young women will slice you in half. So even though Basilisk was released years after Ninja Scroll, we can clearly see that Yashimaru is yet another lift from Futaro Yamada's novel. Bump into your brother. This is how it works. You see that? You feel anything? Well, look at this. So always protect your wallet. There's also a character named Hota Ruby. Her power is sort of like uh, butterflies all butterflying around and everything. And uh, anyway, visually at least, it looks very similar to Kagero when she combats the wasps with her blossom power of blossomness. So I'm going to call that inspiration for Ninja Scroll. I think that's fair. And then there's Testicle Chin Guy. I mean, who designed this guy, right? What? Oh. Even George Lucas has got a penchant for these waddle chin sack looking characters or whatever. But this is this is beyond the pale. Mole. Be quiet for a second. Let me think this through. There's somebody had to put it on him. Can you imagine? There was no there was no need. Look, it was just a regular guy in the live action Shinobi movie. But no, we just know what does he need? He needs a big giant goiter. Hey, knock it off. Who thought this was the good look to go with? I mean, any of these would be less offensive than what this guy looks like. Throbbing, veiny, bulbous, sweaty, pockmarked. <laughs> Will you shut up? Shut the hell up! Listen, whoever you are, get out of here. All right, calm down, calm down, all right? None of those were a picture of an actual nutsack, all right? We're, we're cool here. Are you all right? I'm a reasonable guy, but I've just experienced some very unreasonable things. Somebody, I don't care who, tell me what is going on. We're just talking about Futari Yamada's novel, the Koga Ninja Scrolls, the anime that was adapted into it, Basilisk, guy with a weird chin testicle thing. Is it cool if I just add one more thing before we move on to the live action adaptation? No, no excitement, doctor's orders. No, nothing like that. This is probably going to be one of the least exciting parts, in my opinion, of this whole series. Well, as long as it isn't too exciting. Okay, well, there was also a sequel season to the Kogan Ninja Scroll Basilisk anime adaptation. It's called the Oka Ninja Scrolls, and it's another 24 episodes. It's not exciting. And you thought that would be the end of it? Well, the first Basilisk series is largely loved by fans, the sequel, the Oka Ninja Scrolls, is kind of largely despised by fans, and it's not too difficult to see why. The plot is considered incomprehensible, there's a chibi-like weird quality to the characters which doesn't suit the violence or sexual situations that the characters find themselves in. General quality of the animation isn't really particularly good either. But the point of this channel isn't to crap on things, that's not what I wanted to do. And there's no need to, when everybody else is already crapping on it. So we could look at some of these right here. Some of these reviews are pretty terrible. So it's pretty safe to say that you can skip this one if you want. I think it's very sporting of you to warn me, old boy. Yeah, no problem. There is another adaptation, Shinobi Heart Under Blade in 2005, and this one's a live action adaptation. I've already been playing some of the footage from it. And it's got a lot for its scope of what it needs to do, and as a non-Hollywood production is going to be limited somewhat by its budget. But considering all the things that they have to do from the crazy wire hair stuff and CG jumping through the trees and all the rest of it, it's actually a pretty solid adaptation. Am I asking? Why did you have to bring us here to tell us of this? While the novel and the manga and anime that's 24 episodes have the time to expand on all the various plot points and everything, a live-action adaptation that runs at 100 minutes is going to come into a few problems. What kind of a problem? The kind of problem that forces you to restrain your script from 10 fighters on each side to 5 fighters on each side. But you could also see that as a net positive as it sort of simplifies the story and cuts straight to the heart of the plot. Well, this might interest you. While well, Yagyu Jubei isn't actually in Shinobi Heart Under Blade or Basilisk or the Koga Ninja Scrolls, in Shinobi, his father Munanori is there. And if you look in the scene, he's sitting across from Hattori Hanzo, and next to him 
is his son, Yegu Jube, and you can see he's got the eye patch and everything, and it's just a cool sort of, I don't know, an Easter egg or something for fans. Now, when comparing Ninja Scroll to the adaptations of Futaro's novel, I did notice one sort of striking component. Uh, I sort of mentioned it briefly before. I was wondering, could I share? Seems you've put some thought into this. Go on. Well, unlike the overwhelming cast of characters in even Shinobi, but, you know, 10 on 10 in Koga Ninja Scrolls and Basilisk, Ninja Scroll itself has kind of got more of a good, the bad, and the ugly sort of vibe, with three main protagonists, all extremely different. If you think about it, you're not going to get any of them confused. Kagero's the girl, the other two guys are guys. Dakuan's the old man, Jubei is the young warrior. It's pretty easy to keep separated. Whereas in Basilisk, I actually found myself a little confused as to like, who is this one again, and is this girl this girl, or this girl, because it all seems very samey. There's still a bit of romance between our Ninja Scroll leads, but it's not the defining element of the plot that moves it forward, it's just a, a smaller aspect of it. So while Shinobi is a romance at its core, the conflict between the characters that arises in the plot really just sort of magnifies the drama, but it forces the characters to stay there and deal with what's happening. While Ninja Scroll is actually more an adventure in its core, and while there's a thread of romance between Jubei and Kagero, the plot just keeps us moving and we never have time to focus on it. You buy that? I think not. No? Not so much? Okay. Well, in the next chapter, we're going to be talking about Futaro Yamada's other novel, Makai Tensho.